let's get right into it. Here we have the fall 2014 B-Draft East preseason report and season preview. Uh, my name is David Bradshaw. I'm your host, and I am here with Jason Tibbetts, who uh, was probably the 20th guy I asked to join me on this show after Matt Kaplan big-timed me and countless others were just not available. So, for better or for worse, welcome aboard, Tibbs. Everyone's going to see enough of me this season. Uh, why, why cap bail on you? Oh, great question. Uh, and what is already the biggest upset of the season? He had a date. which I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't believe it myself, but that's the story he's going with. So thoughts and prayers for that poor woman. I think it's his doctor and he's just getting a cortisone shot and he's lying to everybody. Oh, uh, more cap news. Cap is out for an indeterminate amount of time. He might need surgery, he said. Will, he said that before. I'll see uh, how long he actually misses, because he's, he's definitely lied to us before. Yeah, well, we'll see what we get out of him this season. But he said he is going to ref, barring uh, surgical procedures. So, you know, hopefully he makes it out. Well, what do you have to do when you stand at half court and just turn your head? I think he'll be just fine. Yeah, I mean, we'll, hopefully he can power through. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so uh, might as well get right into the show. I know you had a few talking points you want to get into about miscellaneous things other than uh, this season coming up, so fire away. Well, my, my biggest question was what happened in the B-Draft Finals in the spring 2014 season? I was there. I was expecting big things, and uh, I was expecting Jesse's first championship since the very first B-Draft season, and it didn't happen. What went down? <laughs> What didn't happen? Terror, frustration, bewilderment, despair. I mean, this game had it all. It was a nightmare to play in. I would assume it was even worse to watch. It was the ugliest game I've ever been involved in since I was in fourth grade, probably. And uh, the bottom line is we didn't make enough plays offensively to win. I mean, I had 14 points. Kevin Swecker had, I think, 17. And when your two scores can't get more than 31 points, you're not going to win a lot of games. I mean, that's just the way it goes. Uh, and it's still did you guys hurt. have 11 points at halftime, or did you have 15 points at halftime? I can't remember exactly what it was. I think it was 13, actually. <laughs> Split the difference? No, I, I do think that's actually what it was, but it was embarrassing. Believe me, it was horrible. I've, uh, I've got the video on my iPad. It'll go up in the next week or so. It's, uh, there weren't a lot of highlights, so it's a lot of block shots, a lot of turnovers in the video. Yeah, uh, no hurry on that. You know, whenever, whenever you get around to it, believe me, I'm, <laughs> I'm not excited to see it. Still hurts to think about the tale truth. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so, without further ado, we might as well get into the draft. I mean, how do you feel about your team? Uh, I obviously love my team. Um, I just found this morning a picture of a stat sheet. The last time I scored Joe Dilworth's game, he had a 30-30 game, which is why I think I was so excited to get him at number three. 30-30? Uh, yeah, 30-30. 30 points, 30 rebounds in, in a B-Draft East game. I was shocked. My God, how big is he? Uh, like 6'1", 6'2". He was uh, everywhere that game. I, I, I vividly remember it now that I saw the stat sheet. Wow, that is, geez. All right, I had no idea what I was getting myself into with him. All right, so we have Dilworth Hop Curry, who was at the combine, or not the combine, but the preseason, looked pretty good. Uh, I think he got a good value at 39. Mandelbaum at 44, is that right? That, that's right. I can't believe the captain's <clears throat> left him there for me. I was pretty pumped about that. that he'll, be, uh, he'll be running point for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell me about Johnson at 48. I'm excited. Uh, at 48, I got a guy who, although he's a Jets fan, uh, super fiery on the message boards now that he's active, uh, he is going to start, I don't know, one fight a week, maybe challenge three guys to a one-on-one -on -one contest at the same time. We'll see. I'm excited for him. Uh, right. I, I forgot for a second that that's Eric Johnson, who 
I took a look at it, 41, remembered he is a rabid Jets fan and just passed on him without a second thought. So best of luck to you with him. Oh, by the way, him versus Tams, what do you got? Uh, I got my teammate. Uh, I heard he was getting four points. So give him to me straight up. I'll take any money line on it. I, I got EJ all the way. I have Tams, and that is my pick your, pay your mortgage pick of the week. Tams is going to blow the doors off that kid. I, I can't wait until this game happens. Uh, I will be there filming. Uh, Tams is about to move up the street, literally two houses down from me. Um, so if he loses to EJ, I will never, ever, ever let him forget it. <laughs> oh, what a story. All right, uh, so let's talk about some of the other exciting rookies in this league. We have uh, Tyreek Wilson, Guy Shoemaker. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. I have no clue. Uh, other guys, uh, say it again? I said you're not going to say him boyer it, so you're fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, other guys, Tom Colburn, I mean, loaded with rookies. I mean, what do you got on some of these rookies, Tibbs? Uh, I got... Tyreek, I was all excited to take number seven. Had no idea uh, anyone knew who he was. Daryl blew me away by taking him number five. Uh, the kid played at Newton South, graduated in 09, so young kid, lots of energy. Uh, I heard he had a great preseason debut on Wednesday. So that team should probably be a contender, although I didn't think so at first. Yeah, I thought they were one of the more impressive teams at the preseason run. Uh, Daryl Albert came out and shot like four or five on, you know, deep threes. Uh, he looked pretty good. Gus Scott was getting some tough baskets. Uh, that team is going to be a force to be reckoned with in this division. Oh, and the other thing is, though, Nick Mazzeo ran with them, which was his wow. third preseason uh, pickup run in a league he's not even in. Uh, so it's hard to say what this team's going to be without Maz, because right. we know in this league he'd probably be among the leaders in all offensive statistical categories with the exception of friends and hobbies outside of CAC basketball. So we don't know what they're going to have when he's not on the team. Yeah, I'm excited that uh, that Matt showed up for the run. I knew he was going to as soon as he posted on the boards. Uh, that dude will play pickup anytime, anywhere, any place. Whether or not he's invited, it doesn't matter. He's going to show up. I, my main question for Maz is, Nick, how are things at home? Like, don't you have anywhere else to be? Come on. I don't think he does, but do you know how excited he's going to be? He gets mentioned in this video. That's, that's all that's going to matter to him is that we talked about him. Yeah, he's, he's quite the polarizing figure in leagues he's not even in, which is quite the accomplishment, I suppose. It's impressive. It's really impressive. Yeah. So, uh, moving right along, tell me about or what you know about Dustin's team. We have uh, Josh Blackborough, Jim Proctor, Grabowski, Ruzel, and Adrian Guevara. I, I've got nothing on any of these guys. Never seen any of them. So, I'll turn it over to you. Absolutely. So, Blackboro, I've watched in the Beat 2 form for the last couple seasons. Uh, his claim to fame is that he's never lost an opening tip, which is fairly impressive if you take it at face value. Um, I haven't seen it happen, but he's playing with a guy that's 6'6 and probably not going to give up the opening tip very often. So, we'll see how that works chemistry wise. Who's 6'6? Um, I have no idea about Jim Proctor. Uh, his brother is like, eh, he's not that good. So, I don't know how much of a ring endorsement that is. For him. Yeah. All right. And uh, Grabowski, Ruzel, Guevara, what do you expect yeah. from them? And Dustin uh, himself. I've Dustin never seen Dustin. Dustin to be their leading scorer. I expect Dustin to be their leading scorer. Um, oh, really? I don't know how happy he'll be with that. But Neil can put the ball in the hoop, get a bunch of rebounds. It's going to be impossible to get an offensive rebound against this team. Um, they're, they're not going to let up more than 60 points a game. I don't know if they're going to be able to score that many, but it's going to be really tough to score on this team. All right, all right. So next we have uh, Quigley, who at two overall took Greg Krikorian, the other Proctor, Tim Brady, Alex Sherman Ash, the big headband, and Amir Lerner. What are your thoughts on this team? I, I saw I had a look at him. I'll give you my take, but you first. Absolutely. Well, Proctor, uh, Greg, and Pete all had some pretty good chemistry. Played in a draft together last season. Uh, you know, those guys should be able to, to get some, some nice offense going. Tim Brady coming back to us after a couple of years away. He's one of the old school uh, A-draft CRFC guys from, you know, 2004 through 2008 or so. Um, so I'm excited to have him back in the league. Uh, he's known as the greatest American hero. 
uh, 70s TV show. If you Google it, he looks exactly like the greatest American hero. It's, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll be sure to look into that. Now, uh, how many wins do you envision for that team? Uh, I, I see a four and five season with them, easily getting into the playoffs. Uh, four wins basically gets you in yeah. uh, in a 10-team league. Uh, I think that team will have just enough chemistry and offense to, to be okay. Yeah, I, I, I saw them play. I'll give them three wins, maybe. And I don't know that they're going to make the postseason, if I'm being honest. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, well, you might know better than I do. So, anyway, next we have Ruben's squad, who, first of all, let me say this for the last time. Ruben is absolutely a better player than I gave him credit for. I think I had him ranked 41 in my B-Draft West Top 50, to which he took offense and then came out and looked pretty good in a couple of preseason runs this week. So maybe he was right, I was wrong. I've certainly been wrong about these things before. Uh, but he comes out with Baxter at four. Joe Randall, who I'm a fan of. This Garrity kid, I, I can already tell I like him. He's a character. Kwame and then Mike Shumsker at 37. Uh, Tibbs, what, what do you got on these guys? This, this will definitely be a character-driven team. Yep. Uh, Randall, Randall fires everybody up. Um, it, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Ruben, Randall, and Garrity all on the same team. The world might explode. I, these guys are just going to be all over the map, both in terms of basketball skill and on the message boards. It's going to be great. No matter what happens with this team, it's going to be amazing to watch. Yeah, I, I think this will certainly be the, the most fun team in the league. And I, I could see him getting six wins. Definitely a playoff team. I don't know how deep into the postseason they'll go. I think they'll have to ride Baxter uh, and go as far as he'll take them. But they're going to be fun to watch, you can be sure. Absolutely. This team is going to be – you're going to want to tune in to see this team each week, that's for sure. Certainly, certainly. So uh, next we had uh, – we talked about this team a little bit. We had Daryl Albert's team getting Tyreek at 5, Gus Scott 15, Sustash 26, Sadowski and Alfredo. The last three guys on that list, I have no idea. I didn't see them. But based on the three guys I did see, this team is going to be a problem. I can imagine them winning eight games or so. Certainly a playoff team, certainly a contender. And let me go on record right now as saying this team would compete with any team in the B-Draft West. No question about it. What do you have on this team, Tibbs? I, I just got the Tyreek report from the preseason. Um, I know Andrew and Daryl have played together uh, a couple seasons ago when they were in the, the B-Draft East together as well. So... Adding Tyreek to the mix is going to make him pretty good. Um, I am shocked at how few people I know. I'd say I know about half the league. I can't say anything about the other three guys on this team. So I'm excited to see everybody uh, new this season, get to know a bunch more guys, uh, get everybody involved in the uh, CAC action. Yeah, yeah. I, for one, think the rookies make it a ton of fun. It's a blast watching these guys play. You know, the newness of it is just you know half the appeal for me. Absolutely. Uh, so moving right along, we have Scott Hammond's team, who took uh, John Thompson at 6, Chris Parker at 16, John Johnson, who is going to be a sneaky rookie in this league. Watch out for him, a.k.a. John John. Keep your eyes out for him. Then Christian Holmes and uh, Donahue at 45. I saw these guys run. They look pretty good. I mean, they have four guys who can put the ball in the hole. Uh, I like Thompson, of course. Uh, Scott Hammond, I've always thought, is pretty underrated and uh, you know, I'd love to play with him at some point. Tibbs, what's your take on this squad? Well, Hammond put together the last undefeated B-Draft East team a couple seasons ago. So, really, I'm not surprised that he's put together a solid roster. Uh, this team's going to go as far as j or Earthquake carries them. <laughs> First of all, uh, Earthquake yeah. is a million times better nickname than j -Tho. Earthquake it oh, is. Uh, official. Put it down. When he down the floor, you feel it. <laughs> Uh, but his health is basically their biggest question mark. Okay. Um, it, if he shows up to seven or more games, I think this is definitely a contender. Uh, if he really only comes for four or five, I, I don't know how they adjust. Um, I heard good things about John John. Um, I heard he's been a pickup regular the last few weeks. Uh, guys knew about him coming in, so I'm not surprised Hammond, Hammond snuck him at all. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Uh, I like that team also could win the title, and I'll also give them uh, the honor of saying they could contend in the West as well. That's a good squad. 